steal you or Satan is going to socially steal you. It's trying to steal us beyond the horizon for us to get to where we need to go or take us to destruction. That's what we have to be mindful of. Okay, read that again. Read a little faster too. Leo. Yes, sir. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And thou they... shalt bind these commandments upon your upon the hand, meaning what you do. That's why I'm saying hand there. What you do. Go ahead. And and that's got nothing to do with the mark of the beast. But let's keep going. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And what's between your eyes? Your brain, your mind. So your mind got to be reflective of the commandments of the Most High in your thinking and your hands is the action of you doing what your mind told you to do if you ain't dealing with the most high you're going you're going to think of sin and you're going to commit sin with your hand understand the connection and that's okay that we you know you understand that part right we're going to address that dealing with the sin or whatever but sin is not the mark of the beast sin has been around since the beginning of time and the mark of the beast was never mentioned in the whole Bible till you get to the very back. Well, I wonder why. Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. As always, double honors to our apostles and our elders, our teachers and leaders of the Church of Great Millstone that taught us his truism, knowledge, and understanding, and who are ruling well. Shalom, peace and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers that are helping to edify the elect through teaching is true. And Shalom, peace and love be unto you, believers. Now, this video is going to be a video response all right, to a video that was done by the beloved elder, all right, Manata Zakba, out of GMS South Carolina. All right, his YouTube handle is GMS South Carolina 08. You know, subscribe and be edified, which I'm sure the majority of you have already subscribed. And a lot of you have already seen this video, uh, which is a very edifying lesson from the elder. It's entitled Deacon Yawasop, Another Failed MOTB Breakdown from IUIC. All right. And this video is two days old. All right. Now, I was able to catch this video or uh, or at least, you know, some of it uh, because you know, I have a driving gig and sometimes if I'm driving for an hour, you know, or so, you know, I like to listen to videos, you know, and it just so happened that this video inspired me. See, we're in a season of doing videos on the MOTB because something major is getting ready to happen with that particular prophecy. All right. And the Heavenly Father has it keep coming out. It, it keeps coming out. All right. It keeps resurfacing. All right, this is one of those things because it's getting ready to happen. All right, so the Heavenly Father wants to record set straight on it. And when that day comes and it finally happens, all right, like it states within the book of Ezekiel, all right, then you shall know that a prophet has been among you. All right, you're going to know that the, that the prophets of Yahweh by Shemel Bashai have been among you, and you're going to know who they are as well as knowing who the false prophets are. See, when it comes down to the MOTB, all right, which is a, an acronym for the Mark of the Beast, all right, found in Revelation, the 13th chapter, verse 16 through 18, and other, other chapters as well, all right, it's not sin. See, at IUIC, they'll say it's sin in every aspect. They even go as far as saying that the image of the beast is Cesare Borgia. Well, you're wrong, and you have been wrong for a very long time, and I'm just going to say it. All right, the scriptures say, uh, um, you know, basically not to deal with them that are that are given a change. How many times have you changed your MOTB breakdown? You can go back and count the videos are on YouTube, and brothers have done uh, um plenty of different response, you know, to your various different you know breakdowns that you have given concerning it, and it's like you just keep on change changing. So. Uh, Bishop Yawasop, you're wrong concerning this particular breakdown. All right. And you were trying to equate, you, you're trying to say since the Heavenly Father, you know, told the Israelites and it was part of our, our law, you know, it was part of the commandments to bind the, the, the law upon your hand and to bind it upon your your um, your head. That basically our Esau's carnal mark is going to be similar to that. See, 
you come far short, you know, within knowledge. And, and, and because of that, you just wean the hell out of things over there at IUIC. Now, that particular scripture that you were reading in the video, all right, there's two places where it can be found. It can be found in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and it can be found in Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. It pretty much says the same thing. Now, I'm going to go to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, verse seven through eight, and I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show something, all right? I'm going to show something because. Like the scriptures say, and this is one of my favorite scriptures to bring out concerning our individuals that are that are at IUIC that teach the scriptures. All right, that's that's um about the law, the law, the law, and it's always about the law. All right, the scripture says this: the book of First Timothy one and seven, and really, I can um. Go up to verse six and I'll read it. Let me let me read this in the NLT. But some people have missed the whole point. They have turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless, meaningless discussions. They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. And when he was given this 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 breakdown, even though he don't know what the hell he was talking about, he was speaking about it so confidently. That's the reason why even the elder said that when it came down to teaching the lesson, you know, you know, he'll give you that. You know, it was <laughs> you you brought the lesson out, you know, uh, um, in a particular way that was a, a a good class. But however, you're still wrong on your breakdown, and that's because of your confidence. In it, so you could be confident in a, in in a, something that's wrong in a wrong way, and that's what you are concerning this breakdown. All right, in various other breakdowns. Now, you're desiring to be teachers of the law, all right, but however, you don't even know what the hell that you're talking about, and you yourselves don't keep the law the correct way. All right, you're sitting in a, in the seat of the wicked Pharisees and Sadducees, and what did Yahweh Shai warn? He said this. This is the book of Matthew 23 and 3. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not as they, they as uh, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them. <laughs> with one of their fingers. So here it is. You telling people to keep the law. All right. And putting the emphasis on that as if that can save you. All right. But however, you yourselves don't even keep the law right. Let me show you something. I'm going to show. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Anyway, this is Deuteronomy 6, verse 7 through, through 9. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates in which you don't do that as the elder brought that out as well, none of you over at IUIC are doing that. You're not writing the laws upon the posts of your house. You're not writing the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai upon the doorposts, upon the windows, or upon the entry, the exit of your house. You're not doing that. All right. And I would I would even bet that you're you're even unfamiliar, all right, with this particular scripture. I mean, I could be wrong. You know, I speak as a man, but however, I'm confident in saying that because of your the <laughs> because of your past dealings. So the point being is you're you're stressing that the MOTB is sin, right? Okay. Well, there's a law that you're supposed to wear what they consider for phylacteries. All right, and in the phylacteries is supposed to be the commandments of the Heavenly Father. 
And then also, you're supposed to burn it around your arms, burn it around your hand. All right, when you wear uh, um, f- uh, fringes, it's supposed to be on the, on the bottom of a long garment that goes down to your feet. You're not supposed to put fringes in the border of blue on T-shirts. And then we're, we're considered priests. The priests wore long garments. Even Yahweh Shai is represented as having a long garment on with, with uh, uh, fringes and borders, border of blue. It went down to his feet. All right, the priests were commanded to do that, given that if they were walking up the altar so that they wouldn't see their, their members. So you're going off over there. So you yourself, you're doing this video talking about sin and making an example all right, that, that just as the Heavenly Fathers, you know, uh, uh, gave us a commandment to bind it upon the head and, and, and bind it upon the hand, that Esau is going to do that on the left-hand side. And basically, you're going to, you're going to uh, uh, um, by you taking it in your hand, that you're doing the actions, and, you know, by you having it in your head, that's by you having sin in all forms or, you know, philosophies. So you said that. So however you bringing that out, by by your breakdown, you will be sinning because you don't have one phylacteries. You don't have it bound upon your hand. So therefore, is are you sinning? Are you not sinning? Because according to the commandment, according to the law, you're supposed to have it bound upon your head and you're supposed to bind it upon your hand. So by your definition, you and all of the men in IUIC have the mark of the beast. By your by your breakdown. All right, because if, if the if the MOTB is sin, then you aren't you sinning by not having the phylacteries on in the border of blue. See, this shit get me gets me hot, man. All right, when when people misrepresent the scriptures and the true breakdown, this ain't something that you could just play around with and get wrong. All right, you're gonna you're gonna lead. People to their slaughter, but it's all through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai anyway. And the scriptures say in the book of Revelation 1 and 3, it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So when when you go into the word for readeth, it's not just picking up the book and reading. And then, okay, this word matched with that word, so I'm going to just stuff these two scriptures together. Precept upon precept. Every precept, just because it has the same words, doesn't mean that it connect together. Just like every scripture that says the word mark doesn't connect together. You can't connect, you know, the, the, um, the mark in Revelation 13 and 16 with the mark of Cain in the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. It don't, it don't, it don't work out that way. Because earlier... You know, I saw an art article, and uh, it came from news Newsbreak, right? All right, and um, it's from the Delta Discovery, and and you got some corny, uh, uh blippy, looking Edomite. All right, with a with a with a Chester Cat smile, and basically, when you read into it, it says the second mark six six six. What the fuck do you mean the second mark? There's there's only one mark of the of the beast, but then it, when you go into it, it says the first mark. Well, when when you go into that word mark, it's two different marks. The closest thing in the Hebrew that comes to you know, that which is in Rev- Revelation, the 13th chapter, verse 16 through 18, is quite quiet. It's quite quiet. And let me get that real fast. This is the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 28. Is that ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am Yahweh. So when you go into the word for marks here, the word there is 
quite quite and um it says incisions imprinted uh imprintment tattoo mark incision or gash mark so that's the closest thing so it says not to print any marks upon you or not to make any cuttings or incisions in the flesh not genesis the fourth fucking chapter in Salakia, you know didn't mean it you know say fourth fucking chapter but not genesis the fourth chapter so when you go into genesis the fourth chapter all right it um speaks about the curse that will come upon cain genesis 4 and 11 and now art thou cursed from the earth which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand so what does it mean when it says that you are cursed from the earth what that means is it, men came from the ground they were they were dark complected so being cursed from the earth his pigmentation was taken away and you find that out by further reading when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength a fugitive in the back vagabond shall thou be in the earth and Cain said unto Yahweh, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from the face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive in the vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. So what the Heavenly Father did was he put a mark on Cain. So if everybody is dark skinned, the anti diluvians, the people before the flood were dark skinned, what did the Heavenly Father do unto Cain? Reading on, it says, And Yahweh said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slave Cain shall be uh, taken, uh, shall be taken on him sevenfold. And Yahweh set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Now, everybody doesn't have the mark of Cain. So what, do you, what the fuck are you talking about, the first mark? What the hell are you talking about? See, you people are simple and stupid. But that's expected of an of an Edomite because they're not the, the Heavenly Father's chosen people. But you got a dumbass Christian that'll that'll read this article and say, okay, what, what the mark of Cain was the first no, no no the hell it wasn't. Now, when you go into the word mark here in, in Genesis, the fourth chapter, the word there is a waf, and it says a sign, signal, a distinguishing mark, a banner, a re remembrance, a miraculous sign, an omen, warning, token, a sign, standard, miracle, proof. Now, this is the same word that is used when you go into the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter, beginning at the eighth verse, and dealing with Moses, right? And it shall come to pass that they will, uh, if they would not believe not believe thee neither hearken to the voice of the first sign that they will believe the voice of the latter sign and it shall come to pass if they will not believe also the two signs neither hearken unto the voice that thou shalt take uh, of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry ground and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry ground so what was the the uh the latter sign let's read up and Yahweh said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put now thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out in his, of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as other flesh. Now, when you go into the word for signs right here, it's the same word, a waf. So the heavenly father did the same. He made a uh, uh, Cain turn leprous. All right, that's what he did. He made Cain turn leprous. And that was the mark that was put upon him. All right, not the mark of the beast or the first mark or, you know. The, the scriptures say the simple man believeth every word. So you got people that are listening to something like that. Oh, this this person is deep. This person is deep. You about as deep as a paper cut. And it didn't even go all the way through. So anyways, um, 
back to uh, uh, Bishop Yawasap. You just proved, all right, that you don't know what the hell that you're talking about. And if by your breakdown, if, if that was true, then, then you are saying that the men at IUIC have the mark because you don't wear phylacteries. You don't wear, you know, your border of blue in the script. I'm sorry, not border of blue, the slip of the tongue. You don't wear the phylacteries or you don't bind it upon your hand. So if you break one law, you're guilty of breaking them all. You can't just say, well, I'm going to keep some of these laws and then I'm going to choose what I want to violate. And it's not just that. Look, you go off on the Sabbath. You go off on the uh, the fringes in the border of blue because you're not wearing them right. You go off on the lineups. You go off on so many different things, but yet you you esteem yourselves to be teachers of the law. And you don't even know how to uh, uh, keep the laws the correct way. But you pride, you know, your salvation being predicated upon, you know, you keeping the law thoroughly. All right. As the elder brought out, and I'm just going to read this particular scripture, Romans 7 and 17. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So sin, sin dwell in all of us. All right, sin even dwelt in the apostle Paul. And did he not say, uh, um, as touching the law, that he was bl blameless? But he still acknowledged that he that he was a sinner. But but the apostle Paul kept the law good. Better than what the hell you keeping it. Philippians 3 and 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. So he's like, look, if, if anybody could, could boast and have confidence, it's me. Because I'm keeping I'm keeping the law good. Unlike, unlike you. It says, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I'm more. I'm more. So he's saying, look. I could, I could, I could trust in the flesh more than you because look, I keep this law damn near perfect. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. So you got um different nations of the Hebrews as well, but Paul said, "Look, I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews." He says concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching right, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But however, he still identify himself as being a sinner. So basically, you're, you're saying that that you over there at IUIC is perfect. And that only only you, you all will receive salvation. All right. And basically, you don't have the, the MOTB. I want to read this real fast. The book of Acts 15 and 10. It says, Now therefore, why tempt ye the most high to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So here it is. <laughs> our forefathers, you know, and we can't even keep the law perfectly. But, but, but for some reason, you can. And then also, if you're saying that salvation is predicated upon keeping the law perfectly, you're eliminating Yahawashai. So you're saying that Yahawashai isn't needed. All right, and what you call Christ. So the MOTB is not sin in every form. All right, the MOTB is an actual physical device, a carnal mark that Esau wants to put inside of you. Why? Because he wants to be like the Mosai. Isaiah 14 and 14, I will send above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And one of the things that the heavenly father is going to do into the children of Israel, he's going to put the laws in their inward parts. See, the, the laws being upon your hands and on your on your forehead was was symbolic. All right. Even though it was something that we were to do and when we looked at it, it was supposed to remind us. Of the very same things that were written upon it. But however the heavenly father is going to write these things in our inward parts. All right, which means that it's going to be programmed inside of us. 
So this is what Esau Edom wants to do. All right, he wants to do what the heavenly Father is 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 uh, getting ready to do for the children of Israel, according to Jeremiah thirty one and thirty one. Behold, the, the days come, said Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Reading reading further on, it says, um, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which which my covenant they break, although I was a husbandman unto them, said Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write them into their hands. It will be their God and they will be my people. Now, I just want to look this up, the word for inward parts. All right, in the word there is, in the Hebrew, it is karab, and it says miss among inner part, middle, inward parts, physical sense, a seed of thought and emotion, a faculty of thought and emotion, and the miss among from, all right, of a, of a member, and trail so the the faculty of thought and emotion is what it's the brain so just as the heavenly father is is trying to put i'm sorry not trying as the heavenly father will put the laws as the commandments all right in the inward parts of the israelites all right esau wants to make a covenant with the people through the motb by physically putting a physical device inside of them and it's funny that every time y'all go into Revelation 13, y'all never read the 17th chapter. You know, Elder Manatha Zakbar brought that out as well. Y'all never go into Revelation 17 and 18. And if y'all do go that far, y'all just read it. You never break it down. How do you explain the buying and selling part? And what the hell do Esau Edom need to make people sin for? People already been sinning. They sinning will willfully. Israel was sinning before. We even came under the, the, the Edomites. Well, why are we here? We're here for, for not keeping the law, such and commandments. That's a punishment. So if they're, sin, they're sinning will, willfully, what, you know, why don't Esau has to, have to make you sin? And then it conflicts, your breakdown conflicts because you say that it's sin in every aspect. But then you go on to say that the image of the beast is Christianity. And they're going to force the image of the beast and Christianity on you. Well, doesn't Christianity tell you not to sin? So anyways, you know, this is marvelous, straight marvelous. Um, so the, the point being is, um, how are you able to buy and sell then? If the MOTB is sin, because the scriptures say when you go into Revelation 13, 16 through 18, and he calls of all both small and great, rich and, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is a number of men and his number is 603 score and six so how are you able to buy and sell if nobody's going to be able to buy and sell except they got the mark but yet all of us is able to buy and sell including y'all so i think y'all need to go back to the drawing board all right because y'all clearly got it wrong and everybody's gonna see that very soon because it's happening right before your very eyes and they're not pushing people to sin they're pushing people to get a, a digital motb all right the rfid chip and the brain chip so um really I don't even need to, you know, go into, because you should know it by now. You know, you can go into the words yourself. You know, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. All right, until the next time, Shalom.